Today we uh, continue in our preaching series that we've been on for the last couple of weeks as we talk about life realignment. And uh, we have already talked about the sacred life, the broken life that we live in our sin, um, justified life, renewed, repentant life. And today, in our realignment of our life, it's what it looks like when we live a crucified life. I don't quite know where I fit into all the uh, garage personnel that we've had up here over the last couple of weeks. You know, we have Pastor Cross, the mechanic, and Mark, the, super service, the service supervisor. So I've decided that I'm going to be the lady in the parts department. <laughs> and just for a moment, I want you to think about parts of your life. Parts of your life that happen because you are a Christian. Has there ever been a part of your life that has been the most difficult time because you are a Christian? Have you encountered a situation that has been uncomfortable or difficult because you are a Christian? Was it at work? Maybe you were a student at school. You were with your friends. You were with family. Just think about it. When have you been uncomfortable because of your faith? Maybe you were in a discussion with a group of people who weren't necessarily Christian and they were challenging your lifestyle. Did you stand up for something all by yourself when nobody else would stand with you because of your beliefs? Maybe you had to step away from a job or a group of friends. Maybe you have spoken up for your beliefs and then been put down or silenced because you were seen as not accepting the current cultural or societal trend. How have you reacted in these situations if you've had them? One way that we can react is just to acquiesce, give up. Accept that this is how things are and just step back and remain silent. In my younger days and college days, it would have been called going with the flow, right? Just live with it. Another way that we can respond when we're challenged in our faith, is to speak up. Say what we believe and why we believe it. Do it with conviction. However, we almost always run the risk of being shunned, shushed. What do we call it? The cancel culture, right? It happens all the time these days. And it's everyday occurrent thing on the internet. It seems that somebody is always looking for a reason to shut another person down for their beliefs or their convictions, and it can be brutal. Today, we look at the way that Jesus calls us to react. How we are to live when we are challenged because of our belief in him, or just how we are to live because of our belief in him, challenged or not. And let me warn you right now that this is not an easy way to live, but it is the best way to live. So here we go. This is how we align ourselves, living for Jesus in a crucified life that is ours in him and he is in us. And so we are going to see, let's see how this works. Yay! I haven't done this either for a few months, so it feels really good. Control. Um, And so here it is. He says in Luke that, that Pastor DJ read for us, And he said to all, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Deny oneself. Self-denial is one of the hardest things that I have to do in life. I don't know about you. But there are all kinds of ways that I like to have my way. And don't deny myself anything. How about our time, right? My time is my own. I like to do what I want, when I want, where I want, how I want. Don't take my time away from me. It's hard to deny what we want to do, to deny ourselves that time. There just isn't enough of it. When it comes to the things that God has given me, the abundance that he has given me, most of us, you know, I certainly do, I pretty much get what I want when I want it. It's on a credit card or it's uh, on my debit card or it's from a savings account or, you know, some way I get what I want. 
We like to spoil ourselves. It's hard to deny ourselves when we see stuff that is kind of pulling us in. How do we deny ourselves when it comes to tithing and sharing and giving back to God? Deny yourself. How do you deny yourself when it comes to your body? Now, that's probably my toughest one. When it comes to exercising, eating right, living a healthy lifestyle, getting checkups when you should. Sometimes instead of denying yourself, we live in denial about how we're taking care of the temple of the Lord. Because that's what the Bible says. Don't you know that your body is the temple of the Lord? And a lot of times, if we want to save that temple so that it can serve its best, there should be some self-denial there. What is most hard for you? Where are your priorities? Like when you think of others, where are your priorities other than your own? How are you doing today at denying yourself? The next thing Jesus says is, Take up his cross daily. Now, when you hear the words, take up your cross, I think that we get a whole different idea of what that means in our culture today than what it meant to the people who first heard it in Jesus' day. I've heard people say when they're going through something difficult, well, that's my cross to bear, right? That is not what Jesus meant when he said this. I really don't think it is. When he says take up your cross, it's not just about suffering. It's not just about going through a hard time. The cross means death. The people who first heard this must have been mortified and mystified at what he was saying. Then the cross was the most hideous, heinous punishment for a crime. It was meant for the lowest of the low. Why do I have to take up a cross? Why do I have to die to follow him? These must have been their questions as they listened to him that day. Those should be our questions today too. Why do I have to die to follow Jesus? Here are these words from Dietrich Bonhoeffer. A lot of you have heard of him before. He was a famous German theologian and pastor during World War II. He died at the hands of the Nazis shortly before the war ended. He actually did die for his faith. Um, but he had a book that many of you have heard of, The Cost of Discipleship. And in this one section, he says that the cross is laid on every Christian. And listen to what he says. Thus it begins. The cross is not the terrible end of an otherwise God-fearing and happy life. So it doesn't come at the end of our faith life, okay? Thus it begins, the cross is not the terrible end to an otherwise God-fearing and happy life, but it meets us at the beginning of our communion with Christ. And here's his very famous line that a lot of people have heard before. When Christ calls a man, he bids him come and die. When Christ calls you, he bids you come and die. Jesus wants our all or nothing. Being a Christian is not a once-a-week thing that we do. It's not a part-time thing that we do. Being a follower of Jesus is not meant to be just a part of your life. Being a follower of Jesus is meant to be your life. It is life. How often does he say that we are to take up the cross and follow him? On Sunday mornings? Wednesdays during Lent? When we happen to think of it? No. What does it say? Take up your cross daily. Daily. Taking up one's cross daily means dying daily. Dying for what? Dying from what? Dying to our life of sin and living a life for Christ as our Lord and Savior. That's not such a bad thing. That's not such a bad thing. Allowing Christ to live in you, Jesus Christ being your everything. Let's look at the words of the Apostle Paul that um, DJ also read this morning. And Paul says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. In the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. 
I just think that these words are so beautiful and fierce and fearful. I have been crucified with Christ. Jesus died. That means I am dead. Not literally, but figuratively for sure. My old self is dead. I have been crucified with Christ. The sinful self, the self that the world wants to shape, that self is gone. I have the new life that we talked about a few weeks ago. The life filled with forgiveness and grace and hope. And here is the new life that he talks about. I know it is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. What is it to have Christ living in you? What is that like? I believe it is the Spirit of God living in us. It is living the new life where you look more and more like your Savior every day. It is where you are growing the fruits of the Spirit every day. It is you receiving the Spirit of God in your baptism. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. In our baptism, we are born into the death of Christ, into a new life in him. In baptism, that old life of sin is drowned out, and the new life with Christ is born. I want you now to look at these words from Romans. These are words that Paul wrote also, and he says, Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ were baptized how? Into his death. We were baptized, therefore, um, with him, excuse me, we were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. Our baptism is the beginning of our crucified life with Christ. Whether we are baptized as a little baby, like happens here very often, or as a grown adult, or as a teenager, whatever it is, that moment of baptism is the beginning of dying with Christ into a new life lived for him, in him, with him. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. In 1 John 4, and it's in the 16th verse, 1 John, 1 John 4. <laughs> um, we read these words about having God living in us, and this is how it works. It says, so we have come to know and to believe the love that God has for us. God is love. Now listen. And whoever abides in love abides in God, and God abides in him. That's Christ living in us. And it all comes full circle. We come back to what we talk about so often. It's about loving God and loving one another. When God lives in us, when we are loving God, when we are loving one another, God is in us and Christ is living in us. In Christ's words from Luke today, these are the things we do to follow him. We deny ourselves. We deny the old sinner in us. We take up our cross daily Daily we die to our sin and become crucified with Christ so that it is Christ who is living in us. And finally Jesus says these words, right? He says, deny yourself, take up your cross, and what? Follow me. Deny yourself, take up your cross, follow me. That's what it is to follow Jesus Christ. That's what it is to live a crucified life. Paul says it this way in Galatians again. I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Finally, why should we want to live the crucified life? I think I've already said it, but I'm going to repeat it. Why should we want to realign our lives with Jesus Christ? Well, Jesus says it in the passage from Luke that we heard today. He says, For whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. We live a crucified life with Christ so that we may know salvation in him. Today and eternally. To save our own lives. 
We live the crucified life so that we may experience the wonder of God and Jesus Christ and his Holy Spirit living in us. We live the crucified life so that we may be free of the guilt and the chains of sin and new, new, free, forgiven life in Jesus Christ. When the world challenges you, how do you respond? Here is how Jesus calls us to respond again as we realign our lives to the crucified life. And these words are coming from the parts department. These are the parts that we need to remember. I already said them many times over. Deny, take up the cross, and follow. Deny, take up the cross, and follow. And when you do, you gain your life in him by losing your life for him. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, today we give you thanks that when we meet you, that we take up a cross. We thank you, Lord, that you are there for us each and every day, that you were there for us in the beginning, that you knew that taking up the cross would not be easy, but that you went before us, that you did it for us, that in taking up this crucified life, we can know a totally new life with you living in us, your spirit, Son of God. For that we give you thanks. And now, Lord, I pray that each person here may leave here knowing that to take up the cross and follow you means a death into new life. In Jesus' name, amen.